2950X3D details keep popping up. The 9070XT is faster than we once originally thought, and NVIDIA and AMD are rushing their GPUs out to get them cheaper. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Friday, December 27th, 2024. I'm gonna start off today reminding you that we do currently have a PC giveaway going on over on our Twitch channel. You can go check it out, twitch.tv forward slash UFD tech. And it's gonna be for the Corsair Vengeance i5100 PC. It's got a 4900 KF as well as a 4090. You can watch our video about it right up there in case you're interested. Interested. But a lot of you are interested in a comparable CPU on AMD's side. So let's look at the 9950X3D. We talked in yesterday's episode of Hot News that reports are indicating that the clock speed of the 9950X3D should be about equivalent to the 9950X and thereby in synthetic as well as just regular compute tests, not just in gaming, it should be as capable as the 9950X. And why don't you know, we now have a CPU Z screenshot of this CPU indicating multiple things that we now have confirmed confirmed in this. Number one, it's 170 watt TDP, so it is gonna be a slightly warmer chip. Then number two, the multiplier on the clock speed appears to be 56.5, meaning that it's a 5.65 gigahertz chip, which when you compare that to the 9950X is about the same because it's 5.7 gigahertz on the 9950X, which is also 170 watt chip. It just looks like that the 9950X has that additional set of 3D vCache that makes it a much better gaming CPU, which brings me to my just conjecture yesterday, which is that I don't necessarily think these are going to be as price competitive as the previous generation. They have to price segment them a little bit better, so I would not expect this chip to come in at under $699, likely going to be above that. But in case you're looking to pick up the 9950X3D, in case you're looking to cool that, you should definitely check out today's video sponsor. Because do you know what AIO stands for? It stands for all-in-one, like how the Silverstone Nova Peak AIO is an all-in-one cooling package for your CPU, 9950X3D. 3D or something else. The Silverstone Nova Peak AIO 240 millimeter has all the same cooling power of the Nova Peak RGB in a sleek and stealthy all black design. Powered by a dual bar bearing PWM fans that are optimized for radiator cooling, the Nova Peak keeps your CPU cool while maintaining efficiency. The precision engineered copper base plate of the pump header features a slightly convex design, allowing for optimal contact with the CPU, enhancing heat transfer and overall cooling performance. To match the stealthy all black design, the Nova Peak is also designed to be seen and not heard. With dampening pads on the fans and an advanced pump motor utilizing a three phase six pole design, this AIO cools without creating a distracting sound. So you can check out the Silverstone Nova Peak AIO in both 240 mil and 360 mil configurations today via the link in the video description below. Thanks to Silverstone for sponsoring today's video. You can again find them out at the link in the video description. But 9950X3D with the Nova Peak AIO, and RX 9070XT being thrown in there. Well, we got new details coming out about that GPU, indicating clock speed, indicating the power consumption, and also relative performance to NVIDIA's current lineup. So this RX 9070 XT, according to well-known leakers, is that it should have a boost clock range of 3 to 3.1 gigahertz with a base clock of around 2.8. And that comes with a power consumption of 330 watts, total board power of 330. But the more intriguing part of this is that the leaker is indicating that the RX 9070 XT is not going to be 7900 GRE level performance, but rather within 5% of the RTX 4080. So not quite the RTX 4080 Super, but within the 4080, which puts it around that 7900 XTX, maybe a little bit less than that level of performance, which again, this is supposed to be a mid-tier card as long as the naming convention is similar to Nvidia's. The 70 class is the mid-tier. We're not expecting to get a high tier, but a mid-tier card at what is currently a thousand dollar GPU level performance seems to be a good offer that might be coming down the pipeline from AMD. Again, this is just one leaker. We obviously already had a Time Spy benchmark leak, which is where we get that 7900 GRE comparison. But comparing the 9070 XT to the 4080, that's going to mean that they have roughly the same power consumption. So it looks like the power efficiency of AMD is definitely improving here. However, you won't get more VRAM. You're only going to get 16 gigs, which is what is currently available on the 4080. Additionally, it's not going to be faster hardly at all because it is still GDDR6 only 20 gigabits per second, only 256 bit bus. So it looks like the 9070 XT might be, hopefully this is what would be great, but obviously 
I always uh, expect AMD to do something that uh, just slightly diminishes the value of their GPUs at launch. 9070 XT, 48 level performance for 599. Five, 499, somewhere in that price point would be phenomenal if it replaces the 7700 XT. Coming in at that price point would be would be good, especially with the performance level that's being indicated. I'm not gonna hold my breath that this is 100% true, but indications are kind of lining up that it should be better than the 7900 GRE, hopefully. And laptops are getting better, not hopefully, but because companies are releasing new products for it at CES. We're expecting new GPUs, RTX 50 series. We're also expecting new CPUs and Terran's Force revealing some details about their next gen 18 inch laptop that's gonna be coming up. It has quite a few interesting details. An alleged Intel Aero Lake HX 55 watt CPU with potentially an RTX 5090 laptop GPU up to 192 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM gonna be included this 18 inch 16 by 10 display. But a couple cool things, dual Thunderbolt 5 being included, which is great to see because that's still a nascent uh, standard that's being rolled out. I've been able to use Thunderbolt 5 on my uh, latest MacBook Pro as well as my Mac Mini, and I've definitely been enjoying my Thunderbolt 5 dock, but also this is supposed to get a uh, two RJ45 ports, two ethernet ports for networking for some reason. Intriguing. <laughs> we'll see how all of this lines up, but there are new laptops, new powerful beasts that are gonna be hitting the market sometime soon. And Reese is on the market to see how much money he can save you with the deals. Yo, welcome back to EFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Happy Friday, everyone. Hope you guys had a good week and you know, let's get to some deals because that's what we do here. Yeah. Starting off today, we have the Razer Siren V3 mini USB microphone. Going for only $49.99, making it $10 off for a phenomenal little microphone that is very well tuned to reject keyboard noises, which is likely exactly where you're gonna place it. But then, hey, next up, we have the Corsair 4000D Airflow Mid Tower Case, available in black for only $74.99, making it $30 off for a staple. And then lastly today, we have the Hercules Stream 100 8-track audio mixer. A great tool, especially for controlling audio if you're doing any kind of content creation. It is a heck of a lot cheaper than the Stream Deck Plus, which lets you do the same thing and a bit more. But hey, for $89, this is a heck of a pickup and $60 off the total price. And with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, we talked about the deal with AMD. It's performance on the CPU, GPU side. Now let's talk about the deals with NVIDIA when it comes to their laptop. Allegedly, the RTX 5060 Blackwell laptop GPU is gonna be equivalent to the tier above it from the previous generation, RTX 4070. So it's gonna shift one generation, which is kind of what it used to be where GPUs would just kind of be the 1060 kind of being the 970. It was actually a little bit faster than that or something like 2070 being the 1080, that's kind of the general idea that used to happen with GPUs. It looks like that potentially might be happening with the laptop side on GPUs. Also with the desktop side of things, in yesterday's episode of Hot News, we showed you a bare PCB for the RTX 5090. It didn't have any VRAM, didn't have the chip, didn't have nothing on it besides the actual printed circuit board. Now. We have the picture of the printed circuit board with all the doodads, capacitors, VRMs, VRAM, all of that right on it. This is the qualification sample for the alleged RTX 5090. It's being filled in. There you go. It's exactly what I thought it would look like. Big giant chip with 32 gigs of memory surrounding it with all of the power delivery mechanisms going to feed that hungry beast, which is also allegedly going to be expensive. But for the benefit of themselves, Nvidia and AMD are allegedly trying to rush the production of GPUs in order to make sure that they are hitting tariff deadlines because of the threatened tariffs that are supposed to be implemented when the next US administration takes office on January 20th. So this is being reported that both AMD and Nvidia are trying to launch their RTX 50 series and RX 9000 series, not just announce them, but have them to US warehouses for delivery to US consumers by that January 20th deadline because again, of the alleged threatened tariffs that are supposed to be implemented. And I've been seeing a lot of murmuring when it comes to the price of the RTX 5090. A lot of people wanna know, cause that usually sets the tone for the rest of the GPUs. What is it going to be? I've been seeing well-known leakers saying it's gonna be more expensive than people are expecting, especially with alleged price hikes could go up to 60% higher than what we currently have it right now. I've seen some indication, which again, this is not 
gospel. This is not the actual truth that you should take. It's just what I have noticed from being in the circles of discussions on this type of stuff. 2,500 bucks is the floated rate that I'm seeing for the RTX 5090 right now. Personally, I'm hoping that's gonna be under two grand. That's where Brett from UFD Tech is kind of thinking it'll be, but uh, the, the mainstream streets seem to think 2,500 bucks. But as we always discuss, one of the reasons EVGA left NVIDIA was because they just constantly changed their mind and pricing is not set in stone until it's announced on stage. So they could potentially drop the price or they could argue for some tariff exemptions with the next incoming US administration and be exempt from certain things. So obviously nothing set in stone until it pays out. Keep watching, we'll keep you updated as everything's happening with these new GPUs. And what happened yesterday was we talked about a beloved tech journalist who passed. We had a little moment where I got to sing the praises of the late Gordon Ma Ung because he's just made tremendous impact into this industry. And several of you left your favorite memories of him down below in the comments. So let's read those. We got Jay Carmen saying, I love Gordon's humor and insight. The dude was such a legend. So many of us in our late 30s grew up with Maximum on PC and PC World in print and reading his original work. As a kid, I fondly remember going to Borders Books or a couple of local pharmacies that stocked these magazines and flipping through the pages, seeing what kinds of cool and awesome things were coming down the pipe. A lot of love for computers and technology likely can be attributed to Gordon, both directly and indirectly. RIP to a legend. Thank you, Jake Carvin, that was beautiful. As well as Dunk Temple coming in saying, I read a lot of Gordon's work in issues of Maximum PC as a teenager. Back in those days, online tech journalism wasn't as prevalent, so I get the latest issue from my local micro center in Ohio. I read articles about high-end components and PCs, dreaming to one day be around top tier hardware as a career. After many years, I'm now the service manager at a small PC builder slash system integrator here in Ohio. And I like to think that the way we design our PCs is affected in no small part by Gordon. Aside from drooling over hardware at the time, what I learned was to look at everything tech related through a lens of constructive skepticism, which I carry with me now. Gordon's effect on the tech industry cannot be understated. It is far reaching and widespread across the world. It was wonderful to hear your personal interaction story with him. Brett, I'm proud of you for being able to share that with all of us. Doug, I appreciate uh, your story there. And uh, lastly, we got Dr. X saying, Gordon Ma Ung was partly the reason I'm so passionate about computer tech and a PC enthusiast. I started reading his articles back with Boot and Maximum PC. I followed him throughout the decades and this hits like a rock. I can count on one hand the most influential tech journalist that shaped the PC sphere. I may be getting old, but fire for this stuff was fanned by Gordon, RIP friend. Yep. Just not enough good words could be said about Gordon for what he's done for the industry. Uh, we're standing on the shoulders of giants. Obviously this channel wouldn't be possible without him blazing the trail on PBS back in the day, or even with his written writings. The the amount of impact he's had at every level, whether that's Lisa Su um, commenting on his passing or uh, the CEO of Razor, or just even Falcon Northwest, who uh, sponsored yesterday's episode of Hot News, just talking about how getting praise from Gordon was like winning an Oscar. He single-handedly did a lot for this industry um, and he will be missed. So thank you everybody for your kind words on that. Now let's get to some of the other comments. We got Bob Yeterson saying, Nvidia's making all their affordable cards bad. So people have to buy their stupidly expensive ones. No, they don't, no, people still don't do that. They still, the, the primary uh, purchases are still for the 60 class cards. So while that's good theory, it just doesn't bear out in market share. I, uh, I'm gonna counter, I'm gonna counter with another argument and uh, people aren't gonna like this. The average person doesn't know that they're limited by their VRAM and the amount of people who buy it uh, they're they're actually just enjoying it because they don't tweak their settings. The game automatically optimizes the settings for them and they just play it as it's delivered to them. That is the vast majority of people out there. And for the vast majority of people, like Gigabytes will give them the experience that they don't know that there's something better out there for. So it's just, you know, if you, if you wanna get people aware and educated on the VRAM issue, just show them a better life. Bring them to a faster PC, show them on a nice monitor and say, hey, doesn't this feel so much smoother? Hey, doesn't this look so much better? Yeah, come on over to Team High VRAM. 
you can you can live a better life over here. Then we got ATN FN saying, disappointed they didn't lower the VRAM to only eight gigabytes on the 5070. It would make it more fun watching the 5070 reviews. That would be hilarious. They, uh, they've only typically done that on the lower end cards because it's a memory bus issue, like going from a 256 bit bus to 192 or down to 128. That changes the uh, VRAM allocation you can have, which is why we had the 3060 12 gig and then the 4068 gig. It wasn't primarily affected by NVIDIA being like, we gotta give them less VRAM is primarily affected by, well, if they uh, change the memory throughput to be a lower bit rate, then that means that they have to go with eight gigabytes. And then that would mean that they would have to give a 16 gigabyte card. They couldn't keep it at 12, which then would increase their costs. And they look at it saying, who needs a 16 gigabyte RTX 4060? The vast majority of people would not benefit from that scenario. And if they do, they should buy a higher end graphics card because the VRAM likely isn't the limiting scenario in an RTX 4060 situation. It's the GPU core itself. So. There you go. Uh, and then we got Flop Nonstop saying, how do you feel about the band Good Kid? I thought I remembered you buying their mouse pad. I like Good Kid. Uh, I discovered them in 2021. They got just kind of randomly served to me on uh, my music streaming platform. I, I like their uh, lyricism. I like their peppy uptune, chip tune style. Uh, I, I thoroughly enjoy them. I haven't listened to them much lately. Kind of the first two albums was uh, what I mostly enjoyed by them. I know that they've come out with more stuff recently, just haven't had a chance to give it um, a listen, but I, uh, I appreciate them. All right, and then I'm gonna leave you with this last comment, and I'm not even gonna comment on it. I just want you to know that it exists. We got Forever Game saying, really, Navita fanboy? Can we talk about how Nvidia came to be? Whom the stole? I mean, purchased and the tech they lied about for years. I'm so sick of the young tech losers in love with a criminal trash bag company to continue to maintain control through mafia practices. You putz. It's getting to the point of total outright disgust the lies tech panels keep spewing to be on the team green side. I won't buy a single NVIDIA GPU because I don't give my money to criminals. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna comment on this just a little bit. What did I say? What did I say in yesterday's episode that got you a putz? I mean, it's true, but come on, man. <laughs> what did I do to rile you up? You only tech loser? Oh, all right. Well, see you back here on Tuesday for more of the hottest tech news. Uh, and if you don't see me then, have a great new year.